So welcome. Uh, this is the uh, developer section here. We've got 300 level talks. We're going to be here all today and tomorrow. There is the IT 300 level talks next door. So we've got a lot of real deep content. Thanks for hanging out. There is some standing room in the back. There's also overflow spaces over here to the left. And if you do decide to go and wander around, there's also places that you can see us. We have a very kind of unique experience here. You can tell that uh, it is unscripted. I have a clipboard, which I'm very excited about. It's not digital. <laughs> it's not a digital clipboard. Um, everything here is going to be as demo heavy as possible um, and uh, as developer focused and as deep technical as we can be. I want to encourage folks to join the chat. If we have time, maybe not in this session, but other sessions, we'll be having live questions both from the hybrid audience and from our in-person audience. It'll all go through the chat. So if you see a QR code, you're going to want to hit that, or you can hit aka.ms slash ignite slash dev hyphen chat. That will be up on the screen, and that'll be in the QR codes as well. And then that'll get put into our teleprompter here, and we'll be able to answer your technical questions, both for the in-person and the online audience. What would help me out, what would help Mark out, is if you take as many pictures and video as you want, and then hashtag MS Ignite, because that tells leadership that they think this is useful and a helpful thing. So take pictures, hashtag best talk ever, <laughs> and you know, no pressure. Um, and that'll be great. Let's just take a little breather, and we'll begin in about 30 to 40 seconds when I, uh, my heart rate gets back down. You good? Yep, I'm good. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. I expected my mic to be off for that part. All right, so now we're going to actually be live live. This is where we push like a record button somewhere. It's really cool to do a hybrid audience. You nervous? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Okay. I thought that was a commentary on me being bad. <laughs> Hey friends, we are live at Ignite up here in Seattle, Washington. My name is Scott Hanselman. I'm here with Mark Racinovich. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, Mark, uh, in his day job, is the CTO of Azure, right? Mm -hmm. But we're not here to talk about his day job. Uh, I'm more interested in his side hustle, uh, giving away free utilities. CTO of, uh, of Sysinternals. CTO of Sysinternals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you've been doing Sysinternals for how many years now? 26 years as of this month. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And Sysinternals, of course, as you know, is a suite of tools. You can get it at sysinternals.com. It's been around for 26 plus yeah. years. How many people have used a Sysinternals? Where's our Sysinternals oh, people? good. You just wanted you to raise your hands. Okay. So yeah. you can PayPal Mark at... Mark <laughs> at... <laughs> That's pretty cool. 26, yeah. 27 years of free content, free yeah. stuff. Do you still enjoy it? You're still I writing still, yeah, I still love it. You're still, still writing some of that yeah. code yourself? Yep. Yeah. All right, you can go and look at that. We can go ahead and bring up our big screen here, and we'll see the Sysinternals website. Uh, oops, that's my script. I forgot to run Zoomit. So I'm going to go and actually run Zoomit right here. Zoomit is the tool I'm the most interested in. I think that Zoomit is pretty, uh, pretty exciting. This is the tool that I use all the time. I get to zoom in on stuff. So you hit a button, Control-1, and it zooms in. I can pan around. I can click a button, and I can point at stuff, and I can draw circles. I can do things in different shapes. I can type, hey, blah, blah, blah. Um, what am I missing? What other uh, uh, stuff well, is there? There's a, a bunch of other things. Like in, uh, if you just want a blank screen, K will give you a, a dark one. You can okay. do smiley faces in yellow. Uh, you can do W, and that will take you to a, a white screen. Uh, but it's got a bunch of other features, too, that okay. are helpful for presentations. Like, you can do a break timer. Uh, so you can do a countdown timer. You can actually have it with a custom background, too, which I won't show. By the way, a uh, funny joke here is it shows you the negative timer. Dave Solomon, who I used to present Windows internals with, I wrote this tool back when we were doing presentations because we were using a very clunky one, so I wanted our own. So I made a break timer for it. He didn't know that it went negative, and he'd go on a he went on a break and came back like four minutes late. You know, everybody's sitting there waiting, and then was really embarrassed and asked me to remove this feature of it going negative, <laughs> which I didn't. Uh, now, why did you make this in the first place? Weren't there like things I could buy? Yeah, well, it, we had a. Um, presentation tool that came with one of the clickers we bought. Mm -hmm. But it was really clunky. Like to zoom, you had to do control, alt, five, mm -hmm. function key. Yeah. And so it would just be really clunky to use. And it didn't have like smooth drawing and some of the other, it didn't have a break timer with it. So decided to just do my own that would be much more intuitive to use. Now, did you do this like on a short flight? You just like were on an airplane, you wrote in like 20 uh, minutes? Over the weekend. Actually, over it didn't weekend. take long, yeah. Seriously? Yeah. 
Okay. So over the weekend, but, many, many years ago. And I'm not done showing you features. Oh, pardon me. Yeah. Uh, latest feature. Let's see how many people know about this one. Recording the screen. <gasps> yeah. Hang Watch. on, hang on. Yeah. Say it again. Re recording the screen. Yeah. All right, that's better. Yeah. Uh, control f 5 is the default, and uh, it works with all of the other features like Live Zoom, which is Control 4, um, and then you can do go into Drawing Mode, Escape Out, Control 4, to, and then Control 5, mm. and then we can record okay. that, and then... And then that's sitting right here, and did it work? Of course. Wow, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, so offended. That looks cool. Wow. Yeah. 30 frames a second. Just checking. Yeah. Just checking your work. <laughs> Just checking your work. <laughs> okay. So uh, one of the things that I always thought was really cool about Sys internals, and I figured this out uh, kind of myself. You've got this, not, not Sys internals rather, but Zoomit. I've got this file here called Zoomit.exe. I'm going to right click on it and say properties, and it's got about a meg. It's kind of a small file. And uh, I, when you double click on it, it runs instantly and quickly and it sits down here in the corner. So there you can mm -hmm. see it's sitting right there. And I, w I was messing around uh, one day, as, as, as you do, um, uh, in, the, in the temp folder. Uh, I was just hanging out uh, in here because I just... I in the command prompt. Well, in okay, the temp folder. so that's the other... That's, that's, that's my Weren't you using PowerShell a second? Uh, yeah, it's my secret shame. Okay, so... <laughs> So share. this is, this is share. my, yeah, yeah, okay. It's so place this to is, just be open, let it out. Okay, this is a safe space. This yeah. is my PowerShell prompt. This is my Git branch. This is the version of .NET I'm using. That's my blood sugar in real time. Cause, that's pretty cool. Because, <laughs> you know, reasons, yeah. right? Um, okay, so that's my blood sugar and all the important things that I need to have. But um, often I want to delete a folder, so I don't know how to say rd slash s in PowerShell. Yeah. So what I use DOS for is I go into DOS, and then I go into temp folder, and then I go rd slash s temp, and then I exit DOS, and that's what DOS is for. You could for. probably make a PowerShell script. I could do a PowerShell that. script, but now I, but I know how to do this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so. Makes sense. Yeah, it does. Okay, so I'm in here in the temp folder, and I'm gonna type start dot, because that's how I run Explorer, and I was poking around, and I was like, what? Yeah, you look behind the curtain. What are those? Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, remind me to tell you about this. Uh, what? Yeah, so that's a, yeah, I'll t we'll talk about that bug later. Embarrass me in public like this? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, good night, everybody. <laughs> All right, so we got the temp folder, and I got zoomit64.exe. Yeah. So then I'm like, what's going on there? So then I go into Visual Studio, and I go file, open, file, because that's what you do. And then you, sure. you go into your um, zoomit, and then you click this thing that no one's ever clicked, ever. No one has ever I've clicked that. I've never done that. I've never. You, you has anybody clicked that? Oh, look. Hang on. Wrong. What? 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 Are open with. Open with. Open with. So I click open with on the thing, and then, you, then you're in Windows 95, and okay. then <laughs> you, you, can, you can click all these other things, right? And then I click resource editor, and I start poking around here, and this is how you can like go and see your cursors and all the different icons and stuff that you made. But then I found this, RC Zoom at 64, and then... I looked at the PEX code, and I said to myself, self, um, that's, isn't that Mike Zawinski from Monsters no, Incorporated? No, 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 Mark Zabowski. Mark Zabowski, yeah. who's that? He uh, is the guy that worked on uh, the portable executable format and, and DOS and put his uh, little signature in there. And it, it, he's, you know, in every single file in the world now. So there's a guy, yeah. a real person. Yeah. Hanging out right now, probably watching us right now live, because yeah. that's what he does. Um, and he put his initials at the beginning he, of every executable did. on the planet. He did. I was thinking of changing my last name to match that so yeah, I if could you made claim it credit. Z, then everyone. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Then, then I could just say it was mine. But Excellent. Uh, Zafinovich. Yeah. 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 We can make that happen. Okay, so why is there a zoom it in my zoom? I don't know. Why are you poking around like that? Uh, that's the. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> well, I mean, I felt. Pretty good about it. I felt yeah. like I was doing low-level really Windows nerdy, inspection. You know yeah. yeah. Oh, is there um, a better way? Why, Excuse me. Why is there? Uh, well, so sits internals. The, the whole goal is one one executable, mm. no matter what you're doing. And the the challenge that I ran into in the early days of sits internals is the tools would have a driver with them, and I didn't want people to download a exe with a driver file and then have to worry about that. So I would embed the driver in the 
main uh, executable as a resource uh -huh. that on the fly, the tool would say, oh, I need to extract this driver, extract it, and then launch. It was also useful for cross-platform support, going from Windows uh, and uh, X 32-bit to 64-bit, like you're seeing, mm -hmm. as well as Windows 95 and Windows NT support that would be built into the same binary. So, well, what is that? Is that a what kind of binary? That is, is a 32-bit x86. 32-bit. I'm on a 64-bit machine, or yeah. I'm on an ARM machine, but that is a x86. Yep. Okay. And what it does is uh, the code. If we open this up, mm -hmm. and uh, oh yeah, I think it's over here in Solution Explorer. So I, we have we brought the source code of Zoomit with us today. Uh, and I want to just like Oops. yeah, go open that. Yep. So I want to just scroll down a bit because there's a lot here. Yeah. You've done a bit of work. Um, no, keep yep. going. Keep yep. going. Keep all right. Keep, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Don't make fun now, of long if files. If you ever say you should put your class file in another file, you, know, you, just, <laughs> no. you, you don't get to say that. You I'm, just to say Rusinovich believes not it all yet. should be in one file. <laughs> Azure. Funny story. Yeah. Azure. Azure.c. Yeah. <laughs> one big file. One big file. Yeah. There's a header file, too. Oh, there's a header yeah. file. I apologize. Um, <laughs> but so the line we're going to go to is right around here. Ah. If you look, it says, am I running on 64-bit? You should zoom on that. Yeah, I should. <laughs> am I on 64-bit? By the way, you can watch this. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You that can look at anti-aliasing up close. It's mm -hmm. kind of cool, kind of fun. Uh, but anyway, you can see. Am I on 64-bit? If so, then run the 64-bit version. And, and then you, go. but you've got an if def around it. Yeah. So you only, only need to build that when you're not building 64-bit. Yep. And then this thing gets the original file name, extracts this, the 64-bit version. You can see that right here. Mm -hmm. Extract resource. And there's there's what you were looking at. Okay. Over. So it it blooms. It unfolds in yep. the space. And then it, does it, it delete. It deletes and it does. It, it, it deletes it when you exit. It remembers and it'll delete it. That's so cool. it doesn't leave. You know, tries to leave your system clean. I like it. That's pretty yeah. cool. And is that something that you keep? You're keeping secret, or is that something that a technique that is like yeah, a common? Yeah, don't tell anybody. Okay. Yeah. So we should not do nope. that. Or we should not do that ourselves. Yeah. All right. And will that work uh, like on ARM, like on a Surface Pro X or something? It does. Like so ARM 64. Uh, some a bunch of the tools support ARM 64 with the this kind of uh, multi-binary support. We haven't done that with Zoomit yet. Mm -hmm. Look for it in the near future. And it's going to have this, the 64-bit the ARM version embedded in it as well, mm -hmm. because now we've got 32-bit emulation, 32-bit 86 emulation for ARM 64 Windows. Mm. So this universal you know, runtime right there. Yeah, so then this file is x86, and yep. that is your universal binary, because everybody can run it. Yep. And then you run full native. That's right. That's sweet. OK, I dig it. But we also have native versions, like there's 64-bit versions of Windows that don't have 32-bit installed. Mm -hmm. So there's you can go download the 64-bit version of the point. tools directly. That's a good point, because this is Zoomit.exe, and the one that I saw earlier was Zoomit 64, 64 and yeah. then there's Zoomit A. Yeah, Zoomit 64A for 64A. Arm. Yeah. OK, cool. All right, now um, one thing that's also worth pointing out is that um, you didn't like the way that I was learning that. Like, I thought it was normal yeah. to go into DOS. That's not the way to do it. Okay, well, yeah. then show me the way to do it. Show me. Well, so process monitor, you run process Ooh, monitor. Oh, I have run process monitor. Yeah. Um, process mon prop so on to its friends. Some of you that have been to my case of the explain talks, you know, when in doubt, Procmon. run procmon. And that's a, uh, okay, so some of you, like one person has been there. No one. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I just want to say that you you yeah. imply you like you gave me the vibe that the entire audience was going to say when in doubt yeah run, and they did not take that's the, the vibe I I had. was in that vibe uh, at all. when in doubt run, run Procmon. Procmon. Yeah. there it is so uh, it's actually the the most useful tool for troubleshooting it and the the reason it's when in doubt is there's so many cases like you know uh, my daughter came home from school with a homework problem and we ran Procmon and it solved the problem like it just solves everything. <laughs> And so, just when in doubt, just try it. This is a really important point, though, because a lot of people feel that Windows is a black box and you can't see inside, and that's all lies. Like, the one thing that I learned in 25 plus years of using system internals is there's nothing hidden from you. That's right. You just need to bring it to the front. So, here we've got the registry, we've got the file system, we've got the network. Um, and now, there's a thing, though, I found out about if you hit Control T in Procmon, you get this. And check out this corner here. Look at this. There's a lifetime. Uh, like progress bar thing. So where, does zoom it around here anywhere? 
Do, 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 it's going to be towards the bottom because it's. Is it? Yep, there, there it is. Oh, hang on. There's two of them, though. Yep. Okay, what's going so on So you here? exited one, and that's why you've got the grayed out icons there. Okay, so this is a yep. vestigial ghost. It's like ghost. it's a ghost. Okay. Like, and if you take a look over here, you can see that it, they ran for a very short period of time and then terminated. That's why the dark green there, because uh -huh. they're not running. And then here's your, your, your new ones. Whoops. I think we may have zoomed here. too close to the sun. Yeah, <laughs> right there. Okay, so let's, let's zoom out slightly. One of the things that's great about Zoomit is it makes it available for everyone to see, but one of the bad things about Zoomit is when you do talks like this, and you go, look, it's right obvious here, and then you go there, and like, isn't that clear? So you gotta be gentle. Look at that. And there you go. Okay, that would've, that, that, that would've yeah. been easier. Yeah, and you could actually, if you go to Zoomit, you know, if you double click, it'll take you to the Zoomit. Okay, so double click here. Process, now it's taking start. me over to, oh wow. And uh, if you do a filter, right click and say, or on the PID and the process ID. Oh, okay, go ahead, I'll whatever. let you do that. Yeah. You're, the, you're the CTO. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you can say uh, include. Okay. And now you're just looking at Zoomit, and, and if we scroll down you know, here, you would be able to find where it's extracting the, the payload. Okay, so you, oh, there it is right there, yeah. So you can see all the different places, and then look at that. There's your create file right there. Oops, wrong. Uh, uh, we're drawing too much. Yep, yeah, there, there it is right there. Yeah, yeah. nothing is hidden. And yep. then you've even got thread creates in there now too, which is yep. cool. All right, when in doubt, do your... Oh, uh, and you can also look at the way it was launched. Ooh. Here, and see it. Okay, so hang on though. Why are you passing yourself into yourself? This is like Inception. Yeah, <laughs> it's so because uh, some of the tools have command line arguments that the child needs to know about, you know, passed on from the parent to the child. And in this case, there's none, but it sees its starting path there. Oh, right. So then this extraction technique is something that you use across all of your things. Zoom, it doesn't yep. take a parameter, but other things could. Yep. Dig it. All right. I like it a lot. Okay, so we'll come back out of uh, Procmon. That's cool. Oh, yeah, um, when I was doing this, I was drawing like this, and I've got a Surface Laptop Studio, so I've got a pen underneath it, and I was noticing that I could do two things. One, I can use my finger, mm -hmm. like, you know, John Madden, and like, yeah. I don't know sports ball, but I do know um, about EA sports. Yeah. Uh, and then I can, like, draw with this, and then I can also, like, erase. Yep. That was not always there. When did that show up? Um, Actually, in 2015 is when I added pen and touch input. I think it was 2015. 2015, yeah. you're ahead of your time. Yeah. Okay, so let me go into the Zoom at source code, and I'm going to say git view history. Here's all of the git history, and I'm going to put in pen, and I'm going to find out if that was true or if you're just... <laughs> wow, you know. you're calling me out. Wow. I just want to make sure. That some, it could be some other mark. I'm glad right this time I'm telling the writing, truth. Writing code for you. Yeah. Um, integrate Surface Pro Pen. Okay, so yeah. did that happen because someone from Surface called you and said, get it in the Surface yeah. stat? Or did you just buy no. a Surface and you're like, ah, it didn't work, and then you added it? Um, yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, I don't remember, um, but I think I just added it on my own. Yeah, um, yeah I think like I got right? a Surface Pro, and I was like, oh, I, you know what would be cool is if you could dirt zoom it and draw. Mm -hmm. um, now, I want to yeah. talk about the 10 days uh, between uh, this time when it actually didn't Wait, work. 10 days. Oh, I'm sorry. Seven years and 10 yeah. days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I promise you it did work <laughs> when I first checked it in. Did it, though? <laughs> so, so I went in uh, and I did a little spelunking and I found a non-Mark Rusinovich uh, person, our yeah. John Stevens, merged in a PR, said... Fixed touch. That, okay, that's a misleading uh, comment. Fix <laughs> no. touch. Yeah, I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. Just for the conversation. Okay, can you? All right, let's look yeah. at the code. Let's look at the code because we're a 300 level talk here. So let's just double click on that. And uh, boop, boop, ah. actually, no, I don't want to do that. I want to see this. I want to actually do like a git blame uh, and compare the previous because that's the real, that's the real yeah. work. Because the comments are where the, the, the work where is. Where the fun is, yeah. Yeah, someone, someone is, uh, someone's lying. I don't know. Magic value, I just saw a bunch of, yeah. what's going on there? Um, that's the tray. Yeah. Is, that, is that the tray? Okay, two, yeah. four, yeah, I wrote down it. Oh, that's not the right one. Am I lost? Did I ruin it? Did I do it wrong? Huh. Live demo. So I found this. It went like that. Yeah. That ain't it. 
Do, 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 do. No? Why don't you, oh, why don't you find it? Because there was I a comment I, there. Yeah. I, I, I wrote it down. No, Pause for that's effect. Actually, must be the yeah, must be the wrong uh, commit. Well, let's let's go yeah. and look again. Do do do. Live demos at Ignite. <laughs> Entertaining the crowd because dead air is no fun. Oops, I know it was in there because I did the I did the homework, and I'm going to go and say. You oh. commit details. You know, it's so convenient that it's a 5,000 line file. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a, it was a to-do, I remember. To-do? How many to-dos are in here? There should just, there, <gasps> there it is. Yeah, there it what is. is what, the, who deleted the evidence? Yeah. <laughs> what is yeah. happening here? This is so very concerning. Um, okay, what's... Uh, yeah, th let's highlight all the mistakes. Yeah, let's... Uh, uh, Jacques! Yeah. Okay, inserting investigate to do why this code causes touch input to fail. Hmm. Has anybody ever <laughs> put in some code into your C or C++ file and then other code stops working when it has your change has nothing to do with it? <laughs> and then you spend hours trying to figure out what ha and oh, and if you move your piece of code, the other code starts working again. Yeah, isn't that funny because it yeah. says here Moving the code <laughs> appears to resolve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the that's the, the the fun of uninitialized variables. Ah, have you thought about that? Get you set about? to random values in your release build, and then okay. stuff may or may not work because of that. Have you thought about Rust? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then it looks like uh, basically you just moved that code yeah. farther up and yeah, it works fine. It works, cool, <laughs> move on. All uh, right, yeah. ship yeah, it. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. All right, cool. Um, and then, oh, another thing that was interesting, screen recording. It was so fun. As soon as you all gave me access, you never should have given me access to the Git repository. It's clear now. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm just having a hoot of a time here. So I went looking around here and I found the screen recording, because the screen recording is yeah. a really great feature. I wanted to learn about that. So I, I, I go in here and I start poking around. And again, I'm all, I'm all about the diffs, right? So let's go and look at the diff here. I'm going to go and look at the diff, not for the pre-compiled header, but for the CPP. And then I see this big chunk of green down here. I'm like, what's going on? See? So I look at this, and I was like, you know, I mean, I have feelings about this uh, switch statement, but I don't want to talk about yeah. that on stage. <laughs> you know how when like in the movies, when someone like forges a document and they're like, it doesn't feel, and my wife wouldn't write like that or whatever. Mark, I don't feel like you wrote this. It doesn't feel like your code, like the prose. I've, I've read so much Mark Rosinovich code over yeah. the years. It feels a certain way. And then it's like, you just got a thesaurus. Yeah. Started using other words. Why is this this way? So <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the screen recording functions that were added to Windows are available only through one interface. What interface is that? The WinRT interface. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you're looking at is WinRT code, okay. which has this very, very WinRT-ish style to it. Yeah, so it feels different. Yeah. Like I'm looking at this, I mean, just like. Just and I'm not saying whether it's good or bad for the record. No, it's just different. It's just, <laughs> just different. different. Well, and it's interesting to point out, though, because one of the things that's super cool about ZoomIt and SysInternals in general is you said 26 years almost? Yeah. 26 plus years? No, 20. Yeah, 26. Yeah. 30 years? Yeah. Um, you're very 26, old. 26, 26. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is this still works. Mm -hmm. This has been just solid Win32 straight yeah. C code all this time. So you want this to work everywhere. Does it work everywhere? Yes, it works on everything. Win7, Win8. Actually, so the um, policy that I've started following as Windows versions came out of support was just a, hey, we're going to make sure that they work on the supported versions of Windows. And if they continue to work on older versions, fine, but we're not going to make big efforts to keep that going. So it may or na may not work on Windows Vista. So uh, not that anybody but cares. I, I uh, want to give you a shout out, though, brother. Look at that. Yeah. That's well, commitment. Um, yeah, I mean, if people like Windows 8.1, then they can use it. Well, both of them do, and that's yeah. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that bit of code is really interesting. Um, I wanted to point out this, this bug here. So you can control scroll uh -huh. and draw stuff. And I can do my arrows. And you can 
dryer arrow. And I want to just point out, let's make this arrow really giant, OK? I'm going to do that again. Oops, sorry. There's my arrow. And then if I s control scroll while also moving it. Yeah, you're embarrassing me again with no, the but, same thing. No, but what's cool about that is that if you look at the code and you think about it, it's just an XOR. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's simple XOR. It's a simple XOR. I love that stuff. This is really, really, really clean. Um, now, I realize that I may have been showing you, I may have been like having bugs and stuff. Um, I hope that we're, you're still going to talk to me when this is done. Because... Uh, may or may not. Yeah, well, well Dave's still, day still yeah. uh, young, right? Uh, there's a couple of other features that have been, um, have been bothering me. So let's bring up something bothering like that. Bothering you. Well, I mean, you know, preventing me from doing my work. Oh. Yeah, like I'm utterly... Like Zoomits in your way. Zoomits block my yeah. work. Great. Yeah. So, so here's you don't the, have to use it at all. Well, <laughs> there, was a, you know, there, was a, there was a tool that came with my pointer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but the hotkeys were just too complicated, so I ended up using Zoomit. Okay, so one of the great features about Zoomit is not only that you can go and point at something like this, and I can say point. That's probably, that was probably too aggressive. Sorry. There you go. Um, I can push T, and then I can you know, start typing, right? Oh. And, you but, could type. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Typing. There you go. Yeah. But... So often, so often, like twice, I have been to the left of something, and then I want to go and type, and then you've ruined my talk. I want it to go to the left. I've ruined your talk. Well, it's just, it's, it, it was a bad, it was one bad eval. <laughs> Somebody was like, unacceptable. That, that I feel, yeah I, yeah, I know the feeling. So what I want you to do is I want you to fix this live on stage, because... Uh, like, well, it's only one file. It's just all in one file. I figure, you know, <laughs> I, I don't see why this is that problem. Because if it's not an Ignite or a Build, if it's not writing C live on stage. Okay. All right. Does everybody want to see that? All right. All right. Right aligned text input. That's what you want. Right, yeah, I want to like maybe if I hit T right now. Uh, maybe I hit Shift T and it goes the other direction. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, well, the first thing we need to do is find my type mode anum. There it is. Okay. Left and, just to find. Yep. And we need to add what you want. Typing very slow for the CTO. <laughs> <laughs> Notice there were no mistakes though. Touche, touche. <laughs> <laughs> and I need to, um, so the way that Zoomit works is that it types, the, in typing mode, it will type the characters and it will have the characters uh, for a block that you input in an undo buffer. So you can undo blocks oh, okay. of text. Right. Um, and if I take the undo buffer idea and I keep track of the whole block of text you've written, what I can do is at every time you type a key is just add the next key onto the buffer. Oh, and then shift. And then, okay. and then shift from and draw it from that position to the left um, and then record that on the previous version. So undo the... Oh, right. Undo still text. has to work. Yeah. Undo okay. the text you wrote and then write the new block of text, the new buffer. Okay. So I need a text buffer to store the history. So that's what I'm going to add right here. And... Call that text buffer. G underscore. It's like a Hungarian name. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For globals. Globals. Yeah. Which, which I'm not afraid of. And globals or Hungarians? Uh, <laughs> we love everyone. Yeah. Hungarian uh, naming, by the way, is actually named after a famous, hung famous Hungarian programmer. And you would see who things. Who still works at Microsoft. Who still works there, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you could say, you would write a variable, and you'd say LPZ. C S T R and it's a long pointer to a null terminated character array that's a string. And you would put that at the beginning of all of your types. So then anytime you see like I people, it means integer people or whatever. So that's Hungarian naming. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is delete these three lines here. And I need to add a conditional. Could you and type a little slower, please? I'm trying to <laughs> keep up here. How is going? Uh, okay. 
Keep up. Okay, well, hang on. I re <laughs> draw text. Okay. I have no idea what just happened. Well, so if the text buffer is not empty, remember I need to pop the undo, undo to undo what you, you know, just typed, mm -hmm. and then create a new undo, and then draw the new text. So this first draw text is drawing it and calculating the size, mm -hmm. and then I say, well, the the left size of the text box. I need to shift it over to allow it to fit against the right side, which is where the cursor is, mm -hmm. and then actually draw the text. And you can see this is on the right justify code. When, when you're doing stuff like this, like I, I'm one of those people who takes graph paper and like draws the pixels and like actually, like I'm, you know, you know, both for your, for your dungeons mm -hmm. and also for your pixel art. Uh, I'm curious, do you like think about this stuff or do you just like close your eyes and like look into the sky and then it comes to you? It comes to me, <laughs> yeah. I hate that. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I need to do is down here. I need to delete uh, this. Oh, just this line, yeah, right there. Good. Because it's left justify, yep. right? Okay, so you're going to do a right justify. Yep. Okay. Right. And, and then I need to again, check for the. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is. This is what, checking is this, for the what is this got here debugging here on line 3598 here? Do you what, like, got you a fan of got what? here debugging? You know what got uh, here debugging is? This thing? Got here. Got here. Got here. Oh, yeah, well, I it like must that. be between here, these two wait, lines. Here one, here two, here, here one, three. Two, yeah. okay. that, that's my favorite. You still do it like that? I still do. We do have an interactive yeah, debugger. But it's too slow. Okay. So uh, this output debug string is a, a function that I created back probably in 1996. OK, let's uh, peek on that. Then. Yeah. So you can see if debug, and then it takes variable input, and then sprints it, and then outputs it. Well, up to a, up to a k. Yeah, up to a k. It's before safe strings were there. Okay. Yeah. All right. OK, uh, so you output that. Then you have a, oh, if you're holding down shift. Yeah. All right, then, perfect. Then okay. we're in right justify, and then clear whatever was there before. OK, so I, I mean, instead of pushing t, I'll put shift t now. Yeah. OK, And cool. then I think one more change ought to do it. Uh, mm -mm. Da, da, da. Yeah, right here. Well, mm, 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 uh, no, right. Where is it? Yeah, right here to right so there. So you're refactoring via deletion here. Yep. You don't need those lines. Nope. <laughs> are you are you almost oh. done? <laughs> almost done. Oh, oh my yep. God. And there you go. You weren't kidding. Yep. Everybody catch that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. So um, I don't think it's going to compile, much less run. Um, Why? You probably need what? unit tests. Where are the unit tests, Mark Rasinovich? Uh, I'm the unit test. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you can be the unit test. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to shut down the existing Zoomit because you can't have two running at the same time. Yeah. Dirty little secret. There were no, there was no sys internal source control until 2007. Did you just like zip it up and send yeah. it to your friend? Well, we used uh, Visual Studio, with the source, source safe. Source safe. Source safe. Yeah, uh, for a while. Yeah. And then that was, you know. Well, I mean, I know this. I noticed that, that you do the a database lot of would always get corrupted, and we'd have to. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, you do a lot of here one, here two. I assume you had backup one dot zip, yeah, backup yeah, two right. dot yeah. zip. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. What I really want you to understand is best practices <laughs> uh, in, in software, yeah. right? Um, OK, so let's do a, a local build. OK, so we're going to go and build this thing. And look. It built. Oh my god. Now, does it work? Very unlikely. Uh, I, it, it, because if it, I don't know how I'm going to emotionally be able to deal yep. with it if it works. Build, do the 64-bit version. Six Hang on, I'm trying to. I'm if trying you're gonna to, run it, I'm doing a thing here. I wanna, I wanna. What are you trying to? No, no, 64-bit. You need to. All right, go ahead. Does it need it's to be 64-bit? work. You need to exit right, the current zoom it. Fine. Because if you're gonna debug, you need to debug 64-bit. Oh yeah, you're right. Because okay. otherwise, it'll try to extract the 32-bit. No, nope, you're 64. right. You're right. Okay. Thank you for telling everyone that's, live. It's fine. That's. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. I don't have any kind of an ego. Oh, here. now you're gonna complain. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. All right. It built. Yep. All right. Now, now, so you, now I can now, go like this. Well, you'd okay. have to exit the exist. Yeah, I did exit the existing. Okay. okay. So this is the one. This is the one that'll that'll not work because the shift T. Yep. Will. What? Work. What? 
Oh, what? All right, what's going on here? I think you got me. If only I could zoom in on this. Yeah, I'm glad you can. I really, uh-huh. I re- oh, there. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. This is like a, some random yeah. assertion. Uh, there's one a, to 255. So there's an is print car- uh, called an is print function in there that just in the debug build will assert if it's not printable, even though it just returns true or false. So run it in the oh, race build. Oh, it's because I put a question mark. So it was Yeah, outside. yeah, yeah. Oh, that okay. must be it. Outside. Okay. Non-printable. So you want a release oh, or non, whatever. Release build. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you that. Building... It's not running. And then I will prove you wrong. All right. All right. Okay. Never happened before. Will this work? Question mark. <gasps> yeah. Okay. Very there nicely done. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. But that's not all. Can we release it and build it and give it to everybody else? We can. Okay. Yeah. In fact, we could take a look at the CI/CD pipeline for it. Okay. Uh, so this was uh, mostly Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Commit. All right. Excellent. Uh, so we're kicking off a build. All right. Um, so I understand. <laughs> I understand. Anybody know how to delete a commit? Uh, <laughs> it's not possible. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's on the blockchain. You yeah. can't. Uh, you can't delete it. Okay. Uh, so uh, there's a bunch of uh, uh, pipelines in here. You're, you all are building all of, oh, okay, there it's building right there. Yeah. Um, is all of SysInternals on continuous integration? Because you said you it didn't is. have source control until 2007. Yep. When did you actually start building it? In so the about pipeline? 2014, uh, somebody named Luke Kim, who worked in developer division, mm-hmm. he just is like, hey, I'm a fan of SysInternals. I'll help you get a CI/CD pipeline set up for it. And I'm like, have at it. And so he um, started to work, and that was the beginning of an engineering system for SysInternals. Interesting. That's, a, that's a really great. There's actually a question I see from Mike in the chat. Wants to know, is this going to get into power toys, or are you always going to be your own thing? My Can own we thing. ship it with Windows? My own thing. It's your yeah, own thing? Yeah. I need space. You need control? Yeah. <laughs> you need space? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. I don't know what that means. But. So look at that. We've got inside of the, uh, um, the pipeline here, you've got x86, you've got ARM. So you're doing everything. Uh, and then code QL, you're checking code quality. And That's all. actually inserted through policy. I mean, these are you know official engineering build branches mm-hmm. to, that the same uh, build pipelines that Windows goes through. Mm-hmm. So there's policies for code checks like polycheck to make sure there's no, I can't swear inside the comments anymore, which is really disappointing. But it is disappointing. Yeah. Uh, someone in the chat wants to know where they can get this version of Sys internals like. How many places does this thing exist? You can download a zip file. You can do yeah. win-get install sysinternals. You can. You can do win-get because it's in the Microsoft Store now. Yeah. So it, you can win-get it. You can go to the Microsoft Store and get it. That, you're at, directly through the store interface. Uh, my favorite way to get it is live.sysinternals.com. Live.sysinternals.com. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Is for that the, something I would browse to with the internet? No. No? It's actually a file share on the internet. Using f- Microsoft front page? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's what it was part of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back so when, <laughs> when they had WebDAV released. Yeah, so that's WebDAV, because what could go wrong with a <laughs> wide open file share on the internet yeah. that I could just go to? Yeah. But why, uh, Mark Sinovich, in the le- year of our Lord, uh, 2022, uh-huh. would you run a live share on the open internet? You can just go there. I can't break it, hurt it? No. Just read only? Don't, no, yeah, it's read only. Double yeah. click. Double click and go. So anywhere you are, if you want a tool, you hit Windows R, slash, slash, or whack, whack, yeah. live.sysinternals.com slash tools, and they're there waiting for they're you. They're there, yep. That's awesome. I love it. Or you can, you know, do an X copy out of there to your local folder. Mm-hmm. Probably should do that. Yeah. That's probably a smarter, yeah. smarter move. Uh, it looks like this build has actually happened. Let's see if I go over to the sysinternals. Yep page and hit refresh and oh not quite soon we'll wait a minute and see if that comes out so you release everything you zip it up you do all the certs and all that kind of stuff and it goes out there yeah is it every single push or when do you decide to release no only off the main branch uh, is when it when it goes through that pipeline that it okay. gets and then it actually goes through an internal share oh um, okay Where, okay where's, so it, where's that th- so what um we just kicked off um because of a tag was uh, official publish, 
which does a whole pipeline that gets it out onto the file shares and and already had a, a front page update ready to go. Gives it to the people. Hasn't refreshed yet. Yep, gives okay. it to people. But normally the main build does go through the code signing process, but then it just gets dropped into, into internal share. So where, that's an internal share. Yep, where people can run it from there. Tools. Is it tools or files? Uh, files. Files. Do, do, do. Ooh, and oh, then the secret push shouldn't show those secret things. Is it sys internals? Yep. I think I gave and away a code name or something. Lo low business impact, the old classification. For Is that style. what that means? Yeah. Why would they do you like that, man? <laughs> <laughs> I, I really think yeah, it was being high business medium impact. business. I thought, no, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a really good point, Scott. Oh, it is. We should get that chair name changed. Oh, look, look, yeah. what's this? Zoom it. And there it is. 12.34 yeah. p.m. released yeah. on the internal share. Yeah. So, so then it'll go through the checks, and then you said it'll show up on the main, main page, page. Yep. at some point. We'll keep hitting refresh. And then if you really want to hit a fresh aggressively, do you know about aggressive refresh? You push F12, OK? And then it takes you into um, DevTools. And then because you have F12 tools open, you right click. And you have your choice of light, medium, <laughs> and hard refresh. Nice. Yeah. I didn't right. know that. You didn't know that? Yeah. yeah, that right click menu only appears when you've pressed F12. Yeah. And then what you do is you just go aggressive refresh. Aggressive refresh. Ugh. <laughs> and, and it's really, it's, it's a very aggressive. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> so <All right. laughs> so well, that should be popping out in, a, in yeah. a minute. So it'll pop out in a second. How about if we have the it? audience just check on it for us? And yeah, the audience can check on us yeah. and you holler yeah. when, it, when that is done. Cool. So let's see what other questions that we have from the audience. Oh, and actually, I was teasing you earlier about. Um, about Rust, yeah, there was some funny little controversy that happened online because you are a fan of Rust, but you also have a 5,000 line C file. Yeah. Why? Explain. Um, so the, the, the thing is with Rust, it makes mistakes like the one uninitialized variable problem go away. C it, makes mistakes. C does, yeah. It makes it, C, it's very easy to screw up memory management in C. It have leaks, have use after freeze, have buffer overflows. Yeah, you can do a lot of SDL type things, prefix and prefast and linters and things to check for those mistakes and try to get them out of it, but it's really, really hard to get rid of them. So Rust was designed from the start to try to make those mistakes Im impossible or extremely hard to make. And so Rust has become now the, the safe language that is non-garbage collected, so you don't run into pauses. So it's really great for systems code. So whenever you have a piece of code that's running in part of your environment that can't tolerate a, a GC pause, Rust is a great alternative to C, C++. So it's actually, if you're going to write something new, recommendation would be take a look at Rust and do it in Rust rather than C, C++, and it'll make your life a little better. Yeah, it's got a learning curve, but yeah. actually once people get over the learning curve, which actually doesn't take too long for mm -hmm. people that are familiar with C, C++, they end up loving it. It's actually... I think for the last few years in developer surveys, the, no, the yeah. number one most loved language. And, and when you were and when you're learning, you know C and C++ very hardcore. You know, I'm a native English speaker, but then I go to London, and then everyone's on a lift going to their flat. Yeah. Is that what it's like to write Rust? You're like on it's a, a lift bit, to a flat. Uh, it's maybe a more <laughs> maybe more jarring than that. Um, slightly more jarring. Yeah, sl slightly more jarring because okay. the way that it makes you track memory is is very precise. Yeah. Um, but it it pays dividends in terms of yeah, avoiding these bugs that are hard to track down, like That's the one. Cool. Like Not the like me and C Sharp. I'm yeah. C Sharp. I'm just making memory. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. and it, well, and you know that that's the difference between garbage collected languages, right? If you can use a garbage collected language, then that's generally you know what you should do. Go C C Sharp. But is there a reason to rewrite anything into Rust, or are you thinking I, just like, hey, so Zoom it works fine? Yeah, Zoom it. So there's no reason to write Zoom it. So like, if there's a piece of code that is getting input that's untrusted, that's a place that you might want to look because you need to be very careful with how you handle that because a buffer overflow or use after free can be exploited by an attacker with malicious input. So that And that's what gets C, C++ into trouble. Mm -hmm. Rust can prevent that. So if you're going to write something like that, or, or you got a piece of C code that is processing untrusted input, that's a place to go look at changing that code to Rust. But for something like Zoomit, it just makes you know no value to going and rewriting this in Rust. Are there any sysinternals suite things that you either are doing in Rust or thinking about doing in Rust? So we are um, for, so there's some sysinternals tools for Linux now, uh, Sysmon, Process Monitor, and ProcDump. And we've started a ProcDump rewrite in Rust, just for the hell of it. Wow. Yeah. 
for the hell of it. That's a pretty yeah. good business reason. Yeah. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. All right. So in a couple of minutes, uh, if not within the next two minutes, we'll see Zoomit show up on the Sys Internals website because we kicked off an actual main build. Uh, I want to encourage everybody to make sure that they fill out their evals. And uh, for all of these talks uh, and future talks, you're going to see that QR code show up on your screen. And you can go and join the chat. And those, those will show up on our teleprompter here to ask questions. Uh, and then if you don't mind, since we have such a, a large group well, of Well, I wanted to here, just talk a little bit about the future of Zoom it. Oh, yeah, what do you got? The future of Zoom it? AI Zoom it. You're not going to yeah. AI Zoom it. <laughs> yeah. Sprinkling so, AI in? Yeah. Um, using GPT-3, we're going to have a Zoom it. Just know when you want to Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just, just, just kidding. Uh, Talk about going off script. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> you are? <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't... You know, other than write, it, write justified text, I don't have any ideas right now. Well, it would be cool if you, if you zoomed in, and then at this point, it starts to be like art. You know, and well, like actually, zoom in, that's like where we could, uh, could get Dolly 2. To yeah, do Dolly 2 would yeah. be in like, and you'd yeah. be in like a, an Escher painting. That's kind of cool. And then you'd zoom all the way back out, and it'd be fine. Yeah, you'd actually go into another world. Exactly, yeah. that's exactly what I want. Yeah. yeah, let's do that. Okay. All right, cool. Before we go, though, let's take an Ussy, because okay. everyone yeah. scoot together. <laughs> Oh, my phone is so giant, it's covering my face. Yeah. With the, with the, uh, there That's it is. That's better. You're so tall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friends. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break here, and then we're going to come up, and uh, coming up next, we've got Donovan Brown. And we've got a whole day full of deep technical sessions like this with no slides or minimal slides. And we've also got sessions tomorrow. And also check out our friends in the IT Pro Room next door. Thank you so much for being a part of this, and thank you for hanging out at MS Ignite. Thank you.